Kowalski. I'm the Startup School Course Facilitator. Welcome, Facilitator. Welcome to another live uh, Q&A. We're joined today by Dalton. I think the major reason I've seen someone comp uh, creates a new company from scratch is um, there's like legal liability <laughs> on the old company yeah, or there's some lingering, lingering yeah problems there's like a really really good reason why um, but for the most part um, you know it makes sense to keep the same cap table to keep the same investors and it's like a waste of time this is a great example of things you could spend time on you, that are not work and you can also like you don't have to change the corporate name right away no. so I think in your case Danielle you were saying that you have some grant money and you're already incorporated. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter. if We also feel that a discovery tool should have um, both, as 50% of shoppers shop for either one. Do you, th do you think that we should stop, start with just one or offer the full range as an MVP? Yeah. yeah, so if I were doing office hours with a company and they asked me that question, uh, my answer would be, I don't know what, it, you know, it's like, whoa, how did you end up with this super elaborate theory of the market and you've gotten, no customers. And so maybe that's not the case. You say, well, we've done 100 returns. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. that's we can work with And that. even if it's just used <laughs> or even if it's just new, like either one, as long as you have some degree of traction, like then you can iterate and work with that. Yeah. Next up. Is anyone actually using it? Does the product exist? For example, you could like lock your product in and say like, because every good experiment has like a control. You, you don't change both things as you're running experiment. You don't change the product and the user base. So maybe you like say, okay, the product um, the question, one part says, well, when you pitch the idea to people, they're like, I have a startup that makes delicious food. Mm, it is the most delicious food, food you've ever had. You, you love it. You're excited about yeah. this delicious food, right? Well, pretty much everyone you ask the question we'll say to yes. will say yes. And so if you phrase this particular idea as like, we're a learning solution for teams, would you like your teams to learn more? Or better or faster? Yeah, yeah of, of course. course. Like, That's the, the first part is not, it's so like vague as to not even really be a startup idea. And you can run that in one of your experiments. So you already have these people who are kind of casually interested or excited. Mm -hmm. You can try to put people on point and say like, okay, we talked to 20 people. How many of those 20 people are actually willing to pay us just for our MVP? Yeah, And you and, get an answer pretty and quick. And you're seeing a lot of this right now with remote work. Everyone's pivoting to remote work stuff. I get why. Yeah. Um, but just saying work, that's not a startup idea. Like everyone's saying that. Yeah. You have to turn that into here's the thing that we make and how it works and you know, until you, nail down the specifics, you just saying we're doing a remote work startup is like not, um, it is not going to get validation. People weeks, will tell literally. you they're interested. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, that's very interesting. I'm very excited about remote work. That does not mean you have validation on your startup idea, you know? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Next question from Joey from uh, the company Nurture. Uh, pivoting mobile apps is a lot easier and less painful than, um, say, building rocket ships to Mars. What are you have this additional financing risk thing. And, and so if you don't have a plan around financing risk, and I would love to hear your thoughts, you're an expert yeah. on this, like that's gonna, <laughs> you need a plan from the get-go and even having tons of consumer demand, even having prices, even having Kickstarters, we yeah. have an expert here, <laughs> even have like lots of people giving money in Kickstarter, if you have financing risk, it's gonna be tricky. So to, to, yeah. to kind of dive in on this, Financing for a hard tech company is not just about paying for the engineers and the, the people who are working at the company. It's, and they figured out what was the buying time frame? How, how did the greenhouses um, run their budget? How, how, did they, how did they do their profit and losses there? The idea was to make it, to start with a very high margin, high end thing. I don't think you have to. Like, well, I guess like it comes up if an investor says, oh, well, what's your TAM? But, but when you're at a really early stage, um, it sort of doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not aware of there being other uh, people that have talked about this in this level of detail, so, so I yeah. think this is as good as it gets, unfortunately. Um, in terms of triggers, um, it, maybe you shouldn't do that, or you have been doing it, and it's just every turn a goose yeah. egg, like zero customer. Like the most, it's so, it's so funny. I'm just gonna keep writing code for nine months and eventually, you know, the ship will come in and yeah. like that's, that's, a, that's the biggest trigger is that you're in this elaborate. Um, and you can always talk to people. Yeah. Like I think one of, the, one of the things that like founders need to do is get comfortable with the idea of talking to each other about like how far along are they actually to, to getting a product market fit. Um, asking, I'm sure they'd be, they'd be willing to weigh in on that as well. Okay, so last 
startup school, there was a startup in it. Um, called, and just to give a nutshell of what the idea is, um, is they built an open source self-hosted analytics tool that you could run um, Behind where it firewall, comes from a yeah. first party. Yeah. Like if you're familiar with third party analytics, they all come from like Google's website and other people could build it fast. They had customers lined up day one. They had built it at their prior job. They realized they come up against that wall and they're like, it's yeah. not working. And he talks about this in the blog post, but it was actually a nice to have, not a have to have. And so they never they failed to do that pre-white have. Um, I don't evaluate things as, oh, this is a social app or this is a B2B app. It's sort of, is this an interesting thing that has done something different <laughs> um, and the founders have smart things to say. The issue with social apps for the most part is it's just very crowded and the differentiation exists primarily in the founder's own mind. <laughs> it's, hey, we have our first customer, we're live, they're paying us $100, great. Yeah. That's fantastic. One, one of the cool things we have something like 10 to 15 partners and visiting partners at any given time. They usually extremely know what it means to make a thing, to put it out there and to grow it. Yeah. If it was like for college or it was a class project or it was an art project, um, it's, it's trickier. When you, well, this would require more context to give you a good answer, so, answer, so don't over listen to just this one piece of advice, but we're, we're behind you 100%. Let us know Especially early stage how investors. we can help yeah. and you know, good luck. Um, sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, something like 40% of the current batch is targeting a market outside the U.S. Exclusively. Exclusively. Yeah. So how to pitch your company connecting to like the network that we've already built. That's Which I think is the like second largest payment processor that you, the audience member, may even use. Yeah. I interviewed those guys and funded them and I, uh, you know, it worked. It was pre-launch, um, but they had the, the basic setup. Uh, yeah. Rappi was a company that I interviewed and funded and in Latin America, they're, they're the largest online to offline company. Um, Nigerian Indonesian, companies, Indonesian yeah. companies. So one of the things that you can do to help us do our jobs better is to provide some context around the problem. So oftentimes, if that's really frightening, um, or I don't know if there's an or. That's what I would recommend. <laughs> I mean, it, they, they always were profitable, um, according to them. They grew the more they lost money. It's just, it's really tricky. Oh, uh, you know, um, easy to understand what's going on, mm -hmm. easy to parse what it actually is. Um, and try, like there's all these things that we see and it's like people are treating this like get, getting a YC interview is like a lottery ticket or it's like getting like- Or like there's a game that you have to play on the side There's a game and if you play the, the game right and you like, you know, it's, it's all about not whether or not your company is good, it's about gaming the system so that you get funding. And this sucks. <laughs> Not, if you would have spent that effort on just like getting a customer, it's to, uh, to you know, and I'm not even gonna explain how, but uh, where our views of your application video no longer get reported to you. And so, like, this is one of the like crazy things that I think gets missed a lot. Like we read every application that yep. we get. Um, so, you know, yep. we get. Um, so if you take the time to, to fully form your idea and put it down and spend the hour on paper, we'll spend like dozens of minutes. There'll be what is the actual thing you should be doing and how do you do a good job of that? Then your job is to make something that you describe in your application or a team that you describe in your application that is worth, that is good, and then we will want to fund it and not, you know, yeah. hack the system to get funded. <laughs> a couple more rapid fire questions. Uh, um, is there anything specific we should include in our applications so it's nonprofit startups? Uh, nonprofits. What do we look for? Yes. Um, where they're getting a technical advantage to do it, but, but unless this is already your life's work and it's a really big deal, um, I, I would not, like I've, it's just much harder to get in that way. I've, I've had the pleasure of working with yep. a couple of nonprofits. I'm not specific to the startup, but more of the soft skills or the, uh, the other stuff. Yeah, I, I think if you read um, blog the main thing you would want to do in a YC interview is to um, behave like a normal human being and treat us like, like we are normal human beings versus treating it like this theater of um, awkwardness. And you're a normal person, you're doing your, your job and we're having a conversation. That's I would have to have a successful interview than, yeah, then like a to get really agitated about it and treat it um, as a 
theater production or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as one of the primary things that they, they do and they organize, it's worried that due to the coronavirus, the whole like event sector is going to be dragged down and that his company in its nascent stage may be affected. Any thoughts on that one? Yeah, but yeah, you probably would want to react to that. Uh, also, going back to like how companies die, they, they usually die by running out of money or running out of the ability to continue working on it. So uh, It's pretty hard. And there's different ways to define it. It can actually move pretty quickly. The downside here is sometimes people fall in love too much with that idea, and they, they don't think about it as like, um, well, they, they actually like, they may have too large a team yeah. to work on that first idea, and then they have to pivot, and you're left with like 10 people kind of hanging out uh, with, uh, with an they, idea that really only needs two And you get confused around consulting, revenue, where you're like, you try to pretend that your startup revenue yeah. is revenue from the dev shop, and like half the company is working on the product. Like there's here, all these here, like complications. Here's actually a much more common case. Yeah. Uh, another case. It's two founders. They they have an idea, um, and instead of building the product, the beginning it doesn't feel like you're selling a product. Like you're kind of selling your time, but you're getting them to fund the development of the product that you will then yeah. sell to other people. That that's that's one. like every day of the week. I think yeah, we good. we do that. Um, what percentage of international applications get accepted to YC? was like a meme that, that I remember as a, as a founder, like, oh, it doesn't YC say like wherever they came from. That's like totally fine. Exactly. Okay. Oh, here's one. You could do that one. Uh, Elliot from Unify asks, does having a provisional patent for a mobile app provide value when applying to YC or when pitching investors for initial funding rounds? Probably 